Hello, Louise Singleton here, and welcome to the second part of my resin jellyfish lamp tutorial. In the first part, I made the jellyfish, so if you want to see that and you haven't seen it already, you might want to watch that first. But in this part, you're going to see how I made the actual lamp. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching. <music> I measured out how much, how deep in my mould I wanted my resin to go with lentils. You could use rice, I just happened to have lentils handy. Measured it out into the pyramid to the height I wanted my resin to go and then I poured the lentils into my measuring cup so I knew exactly how much resin I needed. And this deep cast resin is two to one so you have one part hardener two parts resin so what I did was I did 115 mils millilitres of hardener and 230 of the resin to give me my two 345 millilitres of resin which is what the lentils told me I needed they whispered in my ear told me I needed that sorry it's late I'll explain why it's late so when I did my first pyramid with this deep cast resin I'd never used deep cast resin before and I didn't know how long it would stay runny for now I did my last one early in the morning and late at night when it was bedtime it was still not at the right consistency for me to use my syringe which is what I'm going to use to do the um, oh gosh here I go again with the not knowing the right words the long wiggly bits that come down from the middle of the um, jellyfish <laughs> oh, I'm rubbish I should have done my research shouldn't I but yeah I'm going to to inject the resin into my casting resin to make those lovely swirly lines and the thing about that is if I do that while the resin is too runny it's just going to disperse into the resin and become a cloudy mess so what I wanted to do was to wait until it was just the right thickness as like really how can I describe it like treacle yeah like treacle so that the um, fresh resin that I inject in the next um, later on um, it won't disperse so that was the idea and I did it in the morning it wasn't ready at night so my logic today is do it at night go to bed then the next day I can keep checking throughout the day and at some point it's going to be right that's what logic tells me so that's why I'm doing it at night. If you're still awake, I'm going to show you the next bit. <laughs> right, so this part's fairly straightforward. There's not much to show you. I've mixed my resin. I think I'm going to go with this one and I'm just going to place it in there like that and then I'm going to continue pouring some more resin don't worry about this they will move and move and move and you will move and move and move them back again so there we go it's going back into position right a bit more heat most of those bubbles will just come up and disappear by themselves but I'm not actually that worried about the bubbles because this is supposed to be an underwater thing so hmm, what's that it's supposed to be underwater so you would get bubbles underwater <laughs> 
so I'm not too worried. Right, I'm going to choose another one. And I'm going to do that one there. Now remember, we're going to be doing the tendril things coming down from each one. So you don't want one directly underneath the other, if that makes sense. So a bit more resin. What you could do, what I meant to bring up actually, what you could do with is one of those kebab skewers to re keep repositioning it and I will do that because they will move. But once you've got it all in the right position in the end, it'll be fine. To be fair, when I come back to it tomorrow morning, I'll probably still be able to move these jellyfish so it's not a not a problem the this deep cast resin from Elichem that I'm using has a 10 hour pot life so that's how long you can work with it and with a good consistency but if you leave it even longer than that you'll still be able to work with it for the process we're using today if that makes sense. I'm, I'm keep using my hands to talk to you and you can't even see my hands. Right, I like this one. This was one of those ones with the aubergine ink. So I'll put that one there. Sorry if you can hear my cat, she's whinging for food. Actually, it sounds like Mitch, he's whinging for food. It's funny how you can recognize the voice of your cats. Right. There's the rest of the resin. Get it all in. This is where I really could do with a kebab skewer because the longer. Uh, there we go. And that one. They don't have to be perfectly straight though, really, do they? Because it might make it look a little bit more natural if they're at an angle swimming around. A bit more heat. And for now, that's it. I'm going to leave it overnight and give it a good 12 hours come back tomorrow and what I will do is just like with the when I was making the jellyfish keep testing it and when it's nice and thick and ready for the um, injection in for me to inject the resin in then I'll show you the next part bye for now okay good morning it's the next day and it is 14 hours later and I'm going to show you what stage the resin is at by sticking in my kebab stick. So do you see? It's got quite a lot of resistance, but it's just about the right stage. With my last one, it had gone too far and I made a right mess doing it. So that's just right now. And I've mixed some... Um, uh, Reflex, let's just check. Reflex Violet in this one with Total Cast Resin. It's my quickest curing resin that I've got here. Um, so I've decided to use that one. And some white, which is Casting casting Craft Opaque Pigment, pigment Concentrate. And I'm going to use a mixture of those. Now, what I've bought is, hang on, it's stuck to me, is some blunt edged, sorry, blunt ended syringes. So there's no point, you're not going to prick yourself, it's not kind of like one what, that would give you an injection. Uh, it's just perfect for this job and I will put a link to that and everything else that I've used in the description. Right, I've changed my syringe. 
That was a new syringe that I'd got and I didn't like it. It wasn't working very well. So I won't give you a link to that one. I will instead give you a link to this one, which has got a thicker needle and it doesn't hold as much resin, but this one should be okay. So let's try again. So I'm going to take a little bit of white. Yeah, here it goes. It's just got that wider needle and a little bit of purple violet should i say seems to be mm, mixing with the white quite a lot so the next one i'll put more violet in right and now i'm going to gently put it down all the way to that lowest one and i'm going to slowly press this i hope you can see press the syringe and whilst I'm pressing it I'm going to pull outwards and give it a swirl like a corkscrew okay give that a wipe And this time I'm going to take more pe of the violet. Oops. Still got a little bit of white in from before. And I'm going to try and do another one. Oh, I googled those bits outside are called um, tentacles. <laughs> And these middle bits bits are called stinger cells. So I'm doing the same thing again. I just don't want to waste too much resin. It's all sticking to the syringe. I'm just going to let it dangle, or drip back in. Right, I think I'm going to do another white one. Something stuck to my thumb. And I'll do this one here. You might see this one better because it's close to the top. So right down, gently press and pull round in a corkscrew spiral. I've just got enough left to do this one. I'm going to do that one a bit quicker. I think I'll do another one there. I think I'll do a quick one here. Oops, there wasn't much left in that one, but it's worked. I'm just letting it all drip. I think I need another one in that pink jellyfish. Get some more resin. And I'll do one just here. Done a quick one. Okay. Right. I'm just looking from the sides. I think that's it. Done. So now I'll let that cure and show you the next stage. So this one is going to have a deeper boxing for the lights and what I'm using for it is some clear plastic. This is just um, some plastic that I had. Uh, I think, yeah, it's from my mould making machine, my Meku machine. And it just happened to be what I had in and it works well. But you could use um, the stiff plastic packaging you get with things or you could use acetate. It's a bit not as stiff as this this is quite good you could use plexiglass 
as long as it's clear you could even use um, a water bottle like I did in the other one just slice down and have a circular a circular boxing for your lights but I'm just using this and I want to make sure I get the height right so I'm just putting a ruler over there a ruler resting on the top of my resin and it's exactly two inches which is nice and easy so I can put that out the way now and so I need to make this two inches because I was working with clear plastic you couldn't really see what I was doing so I've decided to fast forward through that and just explain that all I did was I cut four rectangles and I laid them in a row which you can just see here and stuck them all together to create the kind of just the sides of a box without a base and that's basically all it is it's just a frame which I'm going to glue down the next step is to put this in double check that it doesn't come up too high that looks spot on to me Oops. and then what you're going to do is use your glue gun I'm just going to use it on the insides and go all the way around making sure I don't have any gaps and again this doesn't need to be perfect Right, I'm going to try something different on this one because I always like to try something different. I'm going to start off with some clear resin. Now this is, it's not the same resin that I used before. That was a deep cast resin called deep cast and it takes so long to be ready. I'm not patient enough for that. So I've used total cast which is my quickest curing resin and I'm going to pour in some clear first of all so I'll do that now and hope that it doesn't leak through let's hope I've got all the bits I do actually need some on the inside but I prefer it not to be leaking then I'll put some on the inside I'm only heating it a little bit, I don't want to melt my plastic or damage my silicon mould. Right, so I've got some of those glass beads that you put in vases, these ones. A lot of people buy these to crush them up for their glass in geodes, but I'm going to use them in this. And I'm just going to drop them oh that's my dog just seen the postman I'm just going to drop them down the side and I like to do this because it looks nice but I also like to do it because it saves you on resin if you if you can increase your volume with as much stuff as possible you're obviously going to be using far less far less resin so fill it up as much as you can the reason I put the resin in first was because if I put the beads in first it could have trapped um, kind of stuck against the side of the silicon and not been immersed in resin so I put the resin in first Something over there. Right. 
right and then I'm going to lay some flat in here and the reason I'm doing this is also to disguise the lights I don't I don't want when I put the lights in and we see the finished piece I don't really want them to be too obvious I want it to be a bit more subtle so this way the lights are going to be shining through these and being kind of obscured space for another one in there and one there and one there I think I've just seen a hair no I haven't <laughs> you get paranoid about hairs right I'll just wipe my hands and I'm hoping I'm not doing this too deep I've, I've mixed a little bit too much resin really because you're not supposed to go too deep with the regular kind of resin but I'll cross my fingers now for this little bit of resin I decided to make some yellowy gold to give it that bottom of the ocean feel so I'm putting some Perlex bright yellow in my resin I hope you can see that I don't think you can I'll show you in a moment and just some nameless gold mica powder that I had it's just a subtle gold to give it a shine into my resin sorry you couldn't see it and give it a good mix and what I'm hoping is I can pour this around the top and it will kind of start to sink and diffuse a little bit in the same way that inks would when you make your petri dishes but I didn't want to use ink I wanted to use resin right so I'm just going to pour that around the edge I'll just leave that upside down for a minute and heat it up just give it a little prod just to get it started there we go just to get it moving a bit right. okay and before I leave that I'm going to take my gloves off because they're a bit sticky and I'm just going to um, use a few hang on, gold leaf flakes don't know whether you'll see them or not but if I do it at this stage they'll stick to the uh, resin and then when I do my next layer they'll stay in position For this layer I used three different brownish shades, I think it was antique bronze, antique copper and mink, all pearlex colours and mixed them up and then poured them all into one cup, trying not to mix them too much and then when I poured it into the mould it just gives a really subtle different kind of variation in the colour but it's just not too much. <laughs> I'm trying trying to explain what I mean but you'll see you can see here it's you can just see a slight variation in shades and it just adds a little bit of interest
I'm not going quite up to the top, I need space for my magnets. I left it about half a centimetre from the top of that lighting um, casement. Hello, I'm back and we're ready for the next step. This is nice and um, cured now. It was ready about four hours later, but this is actually the next day because I was busy. So I'm going to make the lid now, just so that I have a template to know where to put the magnets. So I'm going to just hold this against my pyramid to work out how wide I want my lid to be. And I need, I want a little, I don't want it to go right up to the edges. I want it to come a little bit away so you don't see them, see, see the lid when you, the pyramids sat on the top. Oh, it's gonna be one of those days where I can't get my words out. So there, I want it about that big. I think that looks about right. So I'm just going to quickly cut a square. I'm going to do lots of fast forwarding for this. Right, okay. So all you need to do is mark exactly halfway along each side. Okay, and I've got my crocodile hole punch. You don't need to use one of these if you haven't got one of these. Don't go out and buy one. <laughs> Although, maybe you should because the race. Right, so I'm going to use the biggest hole and I think I'll set it so that I know I'm getting it exactly the same distance from the edge on each one. I'll set the guide. So that way, it's very quick and easy and they will all be exactly the same. Saying that, I'm just going to, I can't see the marks through the uh, hole. I'll just go like that. The reason it needs to be perfectly central is so that when you put this lid on, it doesn't matter which way around, the magnets will always line up. So the magnets are going in these holes. Now, I've done this before, so I know for a fact that those holes are not quite big enough for my magnets. So I've got this little tool, which came with a really old, it was with a sewing machine and I salvaged it. I think it's a seam ripper, but it, it's perfect for just making the holes a bit bigger. Not quite, so I'm going to get something a bit bigger. Right, I've got a chopstick that I've been using for staring. <laughs> So uh, that one, that, that'll do it nicely. Perfect. We'll do the back magnets in a minute. But now I've got my template, I can get a marker pen, which is here. I need to put this centrally there. And I'm just going to use my marker pen to hopefully, yeah, mark the centre of my holes in the resin. Yeah. So now I know where to stick my magnets. And I'll finish this off in a minute. So now for the magnets now there's a trick with these these magnets which i'll give you the link for are super super strong and it's very easy 
uh, when you take one off for it to go flying somewhere else and then you've forgotten which way around you wanted to put it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the top of the magnet, take it off and put it out of the way and again, oops they've already stuck together and again and again then we know we're going to have them all the right way around then I'm going to turn it round and do the same here for the lid so one two and those sides with the black mark on are the sides that will stick together three four so that's my magnets all sorted see if I can see how strong these are it's really hard to separate them but I'll do it there so now I'm going to just get some super glue and put a little bit of super glue on each spot put down my magnets I'll put the black mark facing up so we just need to let that set and then we can pour our final layer of resin on so here I have my magnets again put them separate because they will stick together I've got some sticky pack sticky back vinyl I should have uh, waited with my gloves <laughs> I thought I was being all organized putting my gloves on don't really need them on yet okay So I'm just going to stick my lid down on my black sticky back vinyl and this side is going to be the side that goes on the inside so I'm going to put my magnets in with that black mark downwards because sorry yeah downwards that's right because that's going to be connecting with the black marks on the other magnets. Just going to cut along the corners. Fold it all over I have my sticky backed felt So that's the outside and then when our resin has been poured in and it's set that will just clip on the top lovely just like just like this one this one's a bit dusty so it just comes off and clips on so I'll just let that glue dry and then I'm going to put some resin in there Okay, my super glue seems to be dry enough now. I should have said before that um, when you're using your super glue with your silicon near a silicon mold, be so 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 careful that you don't get any glue on your silicon mold because you will ruin it. Right, so I've mixed some uh, resin. And I've put some black acrylic paint in. I want I like this last coat to be black. I don't think I've mixed enough, um, so I'll probably need to mix some more. But this is sufficient just to show you 
the last stage which is covering up those magnets. So there we go, it's just waiting now for that to cure and we're all finished. Have the finished piece I'm quite pleased with it there's things I would change there's, every time I make something there's always something I would change here it is in the daylight and showing you it lit up in a darker room uh, there's certain elements of it that I really love I think my favorite part of it is those glass beads because they, they look if, if you look here they look just like really big bubbles and I do really like that However, I think you'll agree my original one that I did, which was on the left, is far better. The stinger cells show up so much better, they're so much more defined. And that the reason for that is because I left the resin what I thought was too long before I injected my second, you know, the stinger cells. I left it a really long time and I, I really did make a mess doing that injecting part. But because of that, it turned out miles better so the choice is yours really <laughs> either do it like I've just shown you and get, have a really subtle effect or make a real big mess when it's really really sticky I have it like my first picture <laughs> I hope you found my video useful and hopefully it's inspired you to have a go yourself all product links will be in the description if you would like to subscribe please click the photograph of me in the middle there and please remember if you've got any comments just write them below see you next time